welcome in this favorites video. I didn't do a favorites video for quite some time, so I'm going to show you what I found uh, at the end of December and in January in my brocanteur, in my antique bookshop here in my city, and also another I have done online in an English uh, bookshop. Um, I think a few other things uh, just to share with you, maybe it's going to inspire you too. I will have another vlog showing you more of my art in the next videos. Uh, the fox and his carousel and the donkey and his house are going to arrive on Etsy this Monday, Monday 10th, February 10th. Uh, you will see the donkey on the next video, but the, the donkey will arrive on Etsy before. You already saw the chandelier I found in my studio, my art studio. I show an updated video last month about the few, few improvements I did, few last uh, deco touches I added to the studio. And when I found my uh, chandelier for the studio, I also found one for my um, living room and I was super super excited. It's not electrified, it could be, it will need an electrical checkup. I was not interested in that because my ceiling is not in a very good shape. You can't really see it by daylight, there is a paper which is covering the problems uh, which have been applied by the previous owner of the home of this apartment, um, but I plan in the coming years to make it with we plastered completely because it's not even, it's not, it's not even, it's not regular and I think it would be nice if it was but it's not an emergency, it's just you can't really see it by daylight and I just added some uh, candles really inside just to make it nice and a little more maybe, maybe closer to the chandelier you had in the 17th, 17th 18th century. And this one I found it for 50 euro, it's in glass but I think it looks very elegant um, very precious, um, very 18th century, so I was really happy to, to find it. Um, yeah, so now I think it looks just the perfect, it's the perfect size for this room. It's not too small, not too big, it's a bit heavy but not too much, so I think it's, yeah, just perfect. And the other thing I found and I was really happy is this little lamp. It's just a simple basic little lamp. It was 5 euro, so I thought... No, it wasn't 5 euro actually. I'm going to tell you what I had, but I bought it at the same time with my chairs. Uh, it was just a few euros at least. Um, just perfect, just the perfect color. It matches all the other things I have. We are not going to talk too loud because Puklashech is sleeping. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I was just happy. Just another found, uh, another treasure I found in my brocanteur. And another great thing I found for 15 euro, I found two chairs which are close to the other one I previously had. They look a bit the same style, not totally similar, but a bit the same. You can't be maybe too heavy for a chair like that. It's more like a dollhouse chair, but I think it's very elegant. 
and really like just like in the house i'm going to make some things this year i really plan now that i have my sewing machine to do a lot of fabric project on my my pillows my cushions my, all my my little fabric projects so i plan to do something some cushions uh, for all the chairs some yes chair chair cushion for all the chairs which are going to match so yes that's what i found i was really happy about those I also found this little thing, this little pot, which I suppose was supposed to heat something. I'm not really sure of the purpose of that. Um, yes, I was supposed to heat something, warm up something. And I love the, this part. And it's of course going to be for my kitchen. Uh, I'm starting to collect a few things for the kitchen. Some, of course, it's not done yet. I'm going to redo it this spring, summer, but started to collect, to collect little funny old objects like this one. I also found another frame. You never have enough frames, so he had this one. I just grabbed it because I need more frame for both the entrance hall, my kitchen, the corridor. Yes, I want to have a lot of frames. So. The last thing I found at my bookstore was this bedsheet linen, I think. I think it's linen. It's just a simple one. There is only this thing. There's nothing else. It's a bit stained at a few places, like there. So I'm going to try to use some products, some things that I can find to remove all the brownish stains. And we will see. It was really nothing, so I, I couldn't let it uh, in, a, in the box uh, in the, at the book counter. Nobody was interested in that, so I just thought I'm going to do something with that. Even if I can't remove the stain, maybe I'm going to dye it in the future. I don't know, but I think it's just a good, nice, good quality fabric and linen. It's pretty expensive, so I just thought I'm going to keep it and to, yes, apply a treatment to remove the stains. I also wanted to talk about some books, some new books and old books. Um, I wanted to recommend other books by Michel Pastoreau. I already mentioned this, uh, this uh, author who is an art historian, history historian actually from the medieval era, and specialist of colors, of animals. He has written probably more than 50, book, 50 books, and you could find them translated in many languages, Spanish, uh, English in nice version books. Here I bought the paperbacks books. Already recommended the um, color red, history of a color red. So he wrote red, black, yellow, blue, and green. Um, he's really, there are other people who wrote books of colors, about colors, but he's the specialist of that. He has done that for 40 years. So he knows everything about colors from a European point of view. So it's only about European art, history, culture, or that. He's not a specialist of Asia, of South America, or that. So he's only stay in his corner. But it's fascinating. You have, you have, even if you're not an artist, not a creator, you're not dealing with colors in your job. Um, you have colors around you. You have colors in your home. You have colors on yourself. And it's really interesting to learn more about that. They are not very long. They are very easy to read. And they are fantastic. You learn so many things. So um, I have studied art history, actually. This is uh, what I have done um, as, a, as, a, as studies. I didn't go in an art school, anything like that. I didn't want it to. I've been in a university to study uh, art history, the part people would follow to go to work in museums, things like that. Um, we have never ever studied that. I mean, most of the thing I'm learning in these books, I have never, never read them. So the book is about black, this one, which I really loved. Um, there are things you might uh, expect, you wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised by everything, but uh, he also talks about gray, about purple. When he talks about one color, he has to talk about all the other colors, of course, a bit. Um, this one is Le Petit Livre des Couleurs. It's just an abridged version of all the other books he wrote. Um, it's, I'm not sure it's translated, but it's really good and it's just small. It was some articles he published in a magazine in the summer 2005, I think. Did you ever wonder why all the appliances we had at the beginning of the century, uh, 20th century, like a phone, TV, car, all that, they were never done with very crazy colors at the beginning, absolutely never. And he explained that most of the time they were black, gray, dark, or neutral. 
And he explained why it happened, because people could have done completely different colors at the time. The chemical industry was advanced so that they, it could have been in another color. And he explained that all the companies who were doing all these things, both in Europe and in the US, they were all owned by Protestant people who were not really excited to have a lot of crazy colors for these for this appliances. So it's really interesting to see that even religion has something to do with, of course, a lot to do with colors. You will, will not be surprised, especially with black, uh, but also with something we can use in our daily lives. Did you ever wonder why all the bed sheets are white, for example, white, all the people had the, the, the clothes they have under their dresses, their costumes, it was always white. Uh, whatever they were using on their body, it was always white, the bed sheets were white, and people would have been extremely shocked to see black bed sheets, for example, as some, some people could have these days. It would have been possible to have that, and you will. I'm not going to, to give you all the answers, you need to read it. He explains that very well, and it's fantastic. Also the color grey, which was the color of hope. I was so surprised to read that. He also wrote one I really want to read, which is the color of memories, which I think is going to be fantastic. They are all, all great. I, I, I'm going to read most of his books, really, little by little, because they really change the, the way you use things, and they make you think in a different way also. And the last one I bought, and I didn't read this one yet, he has uh, written a story of wolf. He has an history of bear, of pig, I think, and I think another animal, I'm not really sure. But this one, it has photos, it has pictures. Um, I'm really excited to read it because I do a lot of wolves. Wolves are really connected with fairy tales, so I wanted to read this one. I'm not sure if this one is translated, but the bear is translated. So there are other animals which are already translated. I have also visited my old bookshop and I found many books. I go there pretty much once a month. It's the antique bookshop. There are many, many antique bookshops in my city, but it's just the best. It's just a magical place. I like to go there just to have a, a moment out of the madness of the world. You're just in a completely quiet uh, shop with no music, nothing, just old books everywhere. And it's magical. It's really my favorite place in the city. And I just finished reading this one, which I grabbed a little earlier in January. L'Antiquaire, the Antiquarian I think, by Walter Scott. And it was really good. I was not very familiar with Walter Scott. I think I had bought a few books in the past and never really read them. But this one, I read it. I was intrigued by the title and it was really good. Just a great, great read. I also, little by little, tried to replace the, my favorite novels, the one I really loved, and I didn't have nice, nice version. They were a bit cheap, inexpensive books, by oldest version at least, because most of my favorite books are from the 18th and 19th century. So I find on, in an English bookshop online a nice copy of Wuthering Heights, which I really wanted to reread also. And here, for example, I told you about paper, and there was just a paper about uh, beef and pork but butcher <laughs> with the little pictures of other sheep and there are some yes you always find treasures I love that I love reading it and finding some things like that and another one uh, from David Copperfield which I also adore it's one of my I think favorite novels so far from Dickens I read it many years ago but I wanted to have a nice copy and I found this beautiful one which is really cute which is really nice with a lot of pictures and illustration. Just a nice, nice version, a nice copy of the book. And I also found, so online I also ordered another book by Walter Scott because I really enjoy this one. So I bought this one, The Pirate. I wanted to read it. It intrigued me also a lot, also a nice edition. That illustrations. I'm really happy to receive this one and other books by Elizabeth Gooch because I adore this author. I am reading little by little all her novels. So she's she's a more recent writer from England, but I really like her books. So I have The Rosemary Tree, The Jeans Watch, and The Heart of the Family.
Thank you very much for watching this favorites video. I hope it inspired you. I will have other videos coming this month and I will share more of my art, my characters in progress in the next vlog. The donkey which is arriving on Etsy this Monday, you will see it actually in the next video, in the next vlog. It is a bit separated. Uh, but you're going to see that also very soon. I will also have some other videos about my artist series, which I started last year. I wanted to have other videos on this very specific topic. So I will have a bit of that this month and uh, probably also the home decor videos. Thank you very much for your kindness, your support, your enthusiasm. It's very precious. You can give a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and you can subscribe if you don't want to miss what's coming. Thank you very much and I will see you very soon.